Many children may be feeling anxious about the upcoming return to school. Some of those children may have already found school a scary place. Others may be worrying about returning to school while coronavirus is still spreading. Remember that all these fears and worries are entirely normal. In this video, we will share some tips and strategies for you to manage these worries so that your children can focus on getting back to school. So what is anxiety and how does it impact us? Anxiety occurs when we overestimate how bad something will be and we underestimate our ability to cope with it. We can then get caught in a vicious cycle of anxiety. This is because if a child is thinking that something will be really bad and they won't be able to deal with it, they'll feel scared and worried. And as a result, they'll be tempted to avoid that thing or to engage in other unhelpful behaviors to feel safe. These behaviors then reinforce the belief that something bad will happen or that they won't be able to handle it. And so the cycle continues. So in order to overcome anxiety, we need to help children to break out of this negative cycle and into a more positive cycle. Here are some behaviors that children and families may be drawn to during this time and tips for how to not get caught in a vicious cycle. If your child finds it difficult to talk and play with other children, they may be enjoying this time with their parents where they feel safe, but try to keep them in contact with their classmates over video calls as much as possible. This social interaction will help keep their mood lifted and will prepare them for the return to the busy playground. Children may also find it easier to throw in the towel when they find the work too challenging at this time. Make sure that they give it a go and understand that it's okay to make mistakes. Keeping their normal school routine will make it easier for them to return. Try not to let children get caught up in unhelpful habits like sleeping in your beds or becoming attached to comfort toys as they will begin to feel that they need these comforts to stay safe and they will struggle to let them go once they return to school. Also, it's important to stay safe and follow the medical guidelines but watch out for any behaviors that go beyond this advice. Anxious children will find these uncertain times difficult, so they'll be on the lookout for answers. Reading news updates may soothe them in the short term, but in the long run, only hearing the bad news will help keep their worries alive. Limit how often you check these updates. In the long term, this will help teach children that there are some uncertainties in life, and this is okay. It's also tempting for children to spend this time going over and over their worries. We will look at some ways to deal with these worries at the right time. The rest of the time, make sure you schedule in lots of activities that will distract them so they're not exhausted from over worrying. If your child is stuck in one of these vicious cycles, it's important to get them out. So here are some ideas for how to break out of them. Start by being curious and help them to talk about their fears and worries. We suggest using open questions to find out exactly what they're worried will happen. It's tempting to reassure children during this time that everything will be okay and that there's nothing to worry about. Once again, this may help them feel better in the short term, but in the long term it can keep their anxiety going. This is because reassurance is addictive. The more they get it, the more they'll, they'll think they need it to feel better. Instead, children need to understand that a certain amount of worry is normal and that they can deal with their fears and worries themselves. Once you find out what the worry is, you can then follow this up with more questions to help them to gain some perspective and begin challenging some of those thoughts. Encourage them to weigh up the evidence by asking questions about what they already know. It's okay to gently correct any misunderstandings that they may have using reliable and child-friendly sources. Some children might find it hard to open up about what they're worried about. It's important that they feel safe to talk about their worries so that you can tackle them together. If you or your child are feeling especially stressed or tired or busy, don't feel that you need to talk about the worries right away. Save it for when everyone is feeling calm and able to talk. Many children may feel silly or embarrassed 
that they have these worries, this will cause them to shut down. However silly they may seem, try not to dismiss any worries. Show that you understand how difficult this must be for them. It is really important that they know that their worries are normal. It's okay to show that you get worried too, but remember that they are looking to you for clues on how to respond and whether they should be worried. So make sure that you model how you overcome these worries. If you're stuck, it's okay to make suggestions, but just remember to always finish with a question. Don't make any assumptions. The aim is to move away from relying on you for reassurance and answers and teaching them to be independent thinkers who can manage their own worries. When it comes to worry, you can use the worry tree with your child to help identify what type of worry they're having and how to tackle it. First identify what the worry is, then ask, can I do something about this? Worries that we have no control over are often called hypothetical worries. Something like, what if my grandparents get coronavirus and die? Engaging in these worries is exhausting and unhelpful, so eventually we need to let these worries go. In a moment, we'll look at the best way to do this. Worries that we do have control over are often called practical worries or problems. For these, we can use problem solving to make a plan and come up with a solution. In a moment, we will look at how to do this and some possible solutions that you could include. If we've already had a go at solving the problem or set up a time when we will do this, then for now, it's time to let the worry go. For practical worries that we can do something about, it's important to teach your child how to problem solve. This is a technique that most adults can do without too much effort, but children are still learning this and it's an important tool for overcoming anxiety. The first step is for your child to convert the worry into a problem. For example, I'm worried that when we go back to school the work will be even harder and I'll be behind. Then get your child to think of all the possible solutions to dealing with this problem. And remember not to discount any silly solutions as this is all part of the process. They may even offer not going back to school as a possible solution. The next step is for them to list all the pros and cons to each solution. There are always many disadvantages to avoiding things like school, so this is your chance to explore that. Then they just need to pick a solution and make a plan for how to do it. This might be something that they can do now to prepare for going back to school or something that they can do once they're back at school. Both will make them feel more in control and less worried. Here are some solutions to the common practical worries that children have about going back to school during this time. There are some things that your children can do and other things that adults are doing. Everyone is working together to problem solve this situation and understanding this will help children to feel safer and let these worries go. For hypothetical worries, we can use a strategy called worry time. It must be exhausting for your child to worry all the time. So instead, you can set up a regular time where you can both revisit their worries. They might want to write these worries down throughout the day and put them in a worry jar, a worry monster or a worry book. There are also worry apps that they can use. This way, they can park the worry and come back to it at a later time. When you revisit the worry with your child, you can use some of the helpful questioning techniques. It's helpful to draw on the evidence available to weigh up the likelihood of this worry coming true. Once again, you can gently correct any misunderstandings that they have using trusted sources. However, your child knows that the worst could happen. So we also want to consider, what would they do if this happened? Keep this time boundary between 15 and 20 minutes and make sure that it's not just before bed as this may disturb their sleep. If the worries simply won't go away, then you can use grounding or distraction techniques 
to shift their focus of attention away from their worries. Grounding techniques involve paying attention to your environment here and now. You can try asking them for five things they can see, four things they can touch, three things they can hear, two things they can smell, or one thing they can taste. They may also have games or books that they enjoy getting lost in, whatever works to distract your child from their worries. For some anxious children, they may already be stuck in a vicious cycle of avoidance and may find it too difficult for them to overcome this. The easiest way to get anyone to face their fears is by breaking it down into a step-by-step -step plan. Start by coming up with a clear goal that you both want to achieve, something that you would like your child to be able to do, but all this time away from school has made it even harder to achieve. Then break this down into steps, starting with something that they feel ready to tackle, but will get them used to that feeling of anxiety. The aim of this is to show children that it's okay to feel anxiety and that it will pass. For each step, include a different reward and lots of praise. This will help motivate your child to give it a go. Once they have tried a step, then you can review this with them. Find out how it went and what happened. Remember that we are testing their belief that something will go wrong and that they won't be able to cope with this. If a step is too hard, then break this down again or repeat steps until they find it easier. As they get used to this feeling, it will go down and they will find the next step easier and so on.